of Sharon. You are my peace in the midst of the storm.
the man of God said, where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it thither. And the iron did swim. The iron did swim. Living in the supernatural. Living in the supernatural. Ladies and gentlemen, I really don't know about you, but I am really tired of the natural life. The, 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 the life the life of the natural is the life of limit the supernatural life is the expected lifestyle of the believer when Jesus died as he rose he rose with the supernatural power and that is what the bible expects us to live our life by that same power that rose Jesus from the dead the bible says it clearly if that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you it shall quicken your mother but it's me, child of God God wants us everything about our work with God is supernatural the supernatural lifestyle is the expectation of God for every believer and as you hear the sound of my voice I make declarations that from now you shall live in the supernatural I don't like your amen at all the supernatural life is our sum total benefit from Calvary. The sum total of our entire benefit from Calvary is the supernatural life. He said, I send to you the spirit of my father. Jesus was the greatest teacher. Jesus was the greatest rabbi. Jesus was the greatest teacher of all time. He spoke in parables. He spoke to men. He spoke with children. He spoke with animals. The disciples sat at his feet for three and a half years. When he was done, he said, I know you've heard the best sermon. I know you've heard the best message. But tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. In other words, despite what you know, despite what you studied, despite where you schooled, despite your certificate, despite your degree, you can't go far without power. Am I talking to somebody here? He said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endured. I make declaration in the next couple of minutes that power will come upon you. I said power will come upon you. I said power will come upon you. I said power will come upon you. The supernatural is the ability to validly define natural laws. To validly defy natural laws. Yeah, my child of God. It doesn't matter the level of wickedness of hell. It doesn't matter the wickedness of Satan. It doesn't matter what is supernatural. The supernatural is when immortality swallows mortality. The supernatural is when the celestial swallows the terrestrial. The supernatural, do you know that when Jesus was born, it violated the biological law the law of the biology was violated when Jesus walked on water the law of physics was shattered because it is said in physics that anything that goes up must come down almost immediately from here you get the law of logical deduction that say m1 v1 is equal to m2 v2 where m is the mass and v is the velocity but the law of gravity was shattered by the walking of Jesus Am I speaking to somebody here? Do you know when he fed 5,000 men with five loaves of bread and two fishes, he violated the law of economics? Am I speaking to somebody right now? Am I talking here? When he turned water to wine, he violated the law of chemistry. Hear me and hear me well. It doesn't matter what you are going through. There is a life called the supernatural life. It is the life that violates the capacity of the senses. What you think, what you feel, what you smell, what you feel. There is a sixth sense. There is a walk with the spirit of God. The Bible and the iron began to float. I don't know what you are going through, but there is the hand of God coming upon you. When this hand comes, it doesn't matter the battles of your life. It comes to an end. I say it comes to an end. I say it comes to an end. It comes to an end. Take your seat. Can I explain this to you, sir? Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual life is spiritual satan is not as powerful as you think it is you that has refused to develop yourself to develop yourself you know i saw something years ago in the bible in proverbs 18 14 he said the spirit of man will sustain his infirmity the spirit of man 
we sustain his infirmity so in your days of infirmity what gives you sustenance is how developed your spirit is am i communicating here the bible says in proverbs 24 verse 10 if thou faintest in the day of adversity thy strength is not the troubles that are big it's your strength that is small in first timothy chapter 6 verse 19 he said laying up good treasure as a foundation for the time to come there's a time of battle coming but lay up good treasure now am i speaking here speaking of jesus he went do you know do you know why the devil why the devil motivated and moved jesus into the wilderness it was for the purpose because every great man ended in the wilderness moses ended there elijah came up with capacity ended there so satan saw the rising of jesus and he said i've seen this type before and there was a manipulation into the wilderness but jesus violated it by saying where others ended is where i'm going to start am i speaking to somebody here so where others in your family failed you are not failing there there is a supernatural life there's a supernatural life there's a supernatural life in this supernatural life we don't get fired from a job we change jobs am i speaking to somebody here we do not take negative medical reports am i speaking here i don't care what the doctor told you if they say there's no fallopian tube there is philippians tube i don't care what the doctor told you they say you have got into menopause it is menopause not menopause. stop anything that pauses can continue i make declaration on your life by the supernatural power of god coming wherever the enemy has kept you you are moving forward i say you are moving forward you are moving forward take your seat if you're in manchester you heard the lady that gave a testimony that the word of god was going on man we are running from her they told her she can never get married they told her she will have how many of you in that program they told her she will only have money but she cannot get married so she had accepted her fate just to have money she had cars she was okay while the service was going on a bed came out of her head bed b-i-r-o-t came out of her head as the bed came the power of god knocked her down she entered her car to go home two cars started pursuing her one man blocked her in front another blocked her behind somebody said supernatural one man stopped her in front another stopped her there's something called the supernatural life the problem you have is that you are planning your life within the fabrics of your senses you are planning your life within the fabrics of your thinking you are planning your life between the fabrics of your imagination god is able to do exceeding abundantly ephesians 3 and verse 20 philippians 3 and verse 21 is able to subdue all things hebrews 7 verse 25 is able to save to the uttermost them that come to god through him daniel 3 and verse 17 he said he's able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and deliver us out of your hand job 42 verse 2 god can do all things am i speaking to somebody now everyone under the sound of my voice after now enter the supernatural i say after now enter the supernatural enter the supernatural life is spiritual a man sat down they call him balak they call him balak this man said that he was a king he saw israel rising he saw Israel springing forth and he projected into 20 years ahead and said if you allow these people continue 20 years time they will become a great nation so the devil is not fighting you for your today he has seen your tomorrow the force of darkness has projected and see where you are going am I speaking to somebody right now and he said this is what we must do to stop them he hired a man he said come and prophesy words because the battle of life is a battle of words am i speaking here Hosea 14 verse 2 say when you come before me take with you words so he said speak and make prophetic declaration and the man said there's a problem how can i curse who god has blessed he says how can i make a declaration on whom god has not cursed listen to me you are blessed of the lord no curse will stand you are blessed of god no curse can swallow you up you are blessed of god no curse can overthrow you you are blessed of god no curse can mutilate you you are blessed of god 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 you are 
blessed of God. You are blessed of God. You are blessed of God. Take your seat. The supernatural life is free but not cheap. The supernatural life is free but not cheap. The truth that sets free is not free. Am I speaking to somebody here? There is a price to pay to enjoy the supernatural life. There is a price to pay, sir, to enjoy the supernatural life. All of this, your addiction to, to education. All, your, all of this, your logical explanation to the manifestations of the spirit is why you are still stranded. Sir, it's not about where you are. It's not about where you reside. It's about what's on you. Anywhere a king appears becomes a throne. Am I speaking to somebody here? You must get to that point where you understand that you are not like others. You are not like others. The reason why Israel could not swallow up Goliath was that they saw themselves like Saul. When Goliath came, he called them and said, you all are servants of Saul. And they accepted that identity. So long they saw themselves as the servant of Saul, what Saul ran from, they ran from. So long they saw themselves as the servant of Saul, what swallowed Saul, swallowed them. When they saw themselves as the servant of Saul, what disgraced Saul, disgraced them. So when David came, he took on another identity. He said, you have defied the armies of the living God. In other words, I am not a servant of Saul. What stopped others before me? can't stop me. What hinder them can hinder me. Am I speaking to somebody right now? You are a royal priest of the holy nation. A peculiar people called out of darkness to show his marvelous light. You have been in darkness for too long. Somebody under the sound of my voice. God says you are coming out of darkness. He said a city set upon a hill that cannot be healed. God called you a city. You can't die a village. God called you a city. God called you light. You can't die darkness. Everyone here, I don't know what has covered you, but the power of God is taking darkness out of your life. Let me tell somebody, life is spiritual. Take your seat. I came to give by the Spirit of God I came to prophesy relevance relevance Moses was three months old when he got his mother a job Moses was three months old he hired his mom and you are 55 your family has not felt your impact God punished the devil am I speaking to somebody here three months old he hired his mom put her on payroll relevance relevance is a battle Satan likes a regular life, not a relevant life. But God wants you to live a life of the place where we read. He said, and the iron. Do you know there are two definitions of life? What you are born to be and what you are raised to be. Moses was raised to be the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But he was born to be the deliverer of Israel. Sometimes the devil makes you comfortable with what you are raised to be. The society. The culture but you must break out of the norm to say there is something more than this there is something more than this level i know i was raised like this but this is not what i was born to be and the bible says elijah a prophet of god elijah one that understood the dynamics of god nothing listen until you fulfill let me shock you elijah did 16 miracles Elisha did 31. 31. How many? 31. When he died, don't forget, Elijah said, I'm giving you a double portion of my spirit. But he did 31. When he died, as he was being buried, a dead man from Syria, his corpse touched Elijah's bone and a miracle happened. That was 32. Even death could not stop double portion. Even death could not stop the manifestation of a double portion. Until you fulfill every mandate on your head, nothing can pluck you out of this world. Am I communicating? The level of the foolish, where is it? Ecclesiastes 10, 15. Every one of them, because he knoweth not how to get into the city. 
The supernatural life is the expectation of God for everyone called by him. The supernatural life swallows up culture, traditions, customs. The supernatural life is the discharge of God's weight of glory. When God sits on a man, when God tabernacles on a man, when God takes residence, when God headquarters on a man, there are people, ah, yeah, there are people, there are people who, who should be tired of normal life because that is the first key to the supernatural. Be, be dissatisfied with your current satisfaction. Be dissatisfied with your current satisfaction. Be dissatisfied with your current satisfaction. He said, the place we are is too small. Now, I don't know the level of life you have attained, but I'm telling you, it's too small. I don't know your academic level, your financial level, your status in society is too small. It's too small. There are people God has blessed. Am I talking to somebody? And there are so many of us, we, we, we tie our wealth to cars. We tie our wealth to houses. We tie our wealth to the money in the bank. We tie, I, and there are people who tie their wealth to the destinies they are affecting. Am I talking to somebody here? I was reading something. I'm, well, you may not like it because it's not, it's not a born again Christian. I was reading something about the Sultan of Brunei. I was reading his dreams and his aspiration, and they put all his achievement. There was no vehicle there no house there yet he has 600 rose royce not 60. the rose royce company was about crashing he alone sustained them they were closing up he said bring 200. i mean yeah his cars are packed over five thousand cars seated it was not among his list of achievement and you buy one single car Hold your stead and put your head like improper fraction. And, and you, no, no, but nobody can rest. Because as far as you are concerned, that's achievement. What a waste. What a waste. What a, what a calamitous waste of incalculable propensity. But somebody said, my, 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 my world is tied to the lives I've affected. You. He said, "You are a city set upon a hill. Why do you want to die a village? If I ever called you, be dissatisfied, sir. Your lady, your achievement in life is beyond marriage. Beyond marriage. Your achievement in life is beyond having a child. Your achievement in life is beyond making a few millions of pounds. There's something more than that. Be dissatisfied." The Bible says, from the day the kingdom of from the days of John, the kingdom of God has been preached, and every man press it. Luke 16 16. Every man press it, 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 press it. Let me tell somebody there is something more than this. Say that to someone, there's something more than this. Say that again, there's something more than this. Say that again, there's something more than this. Say that again, there's something more than this. Say there is something more than this. Will God bless you? Yes. Will God expand you? Yes. But after the expansion come, you have to know the purpose for it. God must bless you. No, God will bless you. No, you have no choice. So long you are in this atmosphere, you'll be contaminated. God must bless you. Oh, there are some of you are not raising your hands. Oh, because you see, you see, you see. You see financial blessing as vanity. I many of you know how many of you know poverty is vanity? Oh, you don't know. Do you know a new car is vanity? But you know trekking is vanity. No, how many of you know a mansion? How many of you know a mansion is vanity? You don't know sleeping in a mansion is vanity, and but sleeping on the street is vanity. So choose your vanity. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> God is not against you having blessings, but it's against blessings having you. He wants you to be blessed so that you can, you can, so that the devil will not brag too much. So that those following Satan, I told somebody as a young man in our church, he came scattered. 
battered. This guy was so broke and so poor. He was so broke, he almost had stroke. Am I talking to somebody here? He was that broke. You know the kind of being, the, the kind of poverty that affects your health. There are some people when they are coming, you are saying poverty, 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 poverty. The guy was in that dimension. When this guy came, after every service, he would tell me, sir, I'm going home. I said, go. Sir, I'm going home. I said, go. One day I had to ask him, you don't know your address? Don't you know your address? Why are you not telling me you are going home? Have you forgotten your address? He says, sir, you know what I mean. I will give this guy money. I will give him money. This guy was so broke. Many times he would tell me, I'm going. I said, okay, I'm going. I said, okay, can I go? I said, go. Can I go? God has so blessed him now. So blessed him. And he came to me. He said, sir, people say I'm using things. People say I'm occultic. As when you were poor, did they say something? Yeah, they say I was too poor. Now you are blessed. What are they saying? He said, they say my riches and wealth is not ordinary. As which one do you prefer? Do you know there's nothing as annoying like when you have nothing and you have been envied? You didn't hear what I said? You have nothing and you are envied. It can be irritating because you say, what do I even... I want to pray a prayer for you, but don't say amen. Listen, wait, wait, wait. Before you say amen, listen. May God give you the kind of blessings that when people start talking about it, they won't stop talking. Let me explain. Let me explain. When they open their mouth and say, have you heard the body car? Say, what car? He has bought five houses. They say house. He has bought three. They say estate. He has bought... They, when they start talking, they won't stop talking. You are operating dimensions. You are operating in realms of glory. You are operating in realms of God. Let me tell somebody, there is something more than this. Jephthah said, when I saw that you people were not willing to help me, I took my life in my hands. I took my, there is something more than this. More than this more than this and every limitation every struggle that is what we call the supernatural the intervention of God the supernatural is the intentional finger on of divinity on the matters of humanity the intentional deliberate concerted effort of, of divinity on the matters of humanity am i communicating every barricade every barrier between you and your next level every restriction every resistance between you and your next level the lord takes it away now whatever is standing between you anything that the enemy has placed between you and your next level the lord take it away now the Lord take it away now. The Lord take it away now. Take your seat. Anything you have already attained is not an, an achievement. You didn't hear what I said. Anything you, are, you have already attained is no more an achievement. Your credential is that which you have. Your potential is that which you have not gotten. Your potential is that which you are yet to have. Your capacity is not what you have. Your capacity is what you yet to have. So you must get to understand that so long you have had it, put it behind you, press forward. There's a next level. Am I communicating? There's a next level. There is something more than this. There is something more than this. Your condition is not your conclusion. Your current condition. We don't live life as supernatural beings. We don't live life on experience. We live on expectation. Our, our life is not tied to our experiences. Our life is tied to our expectation. I wish I was talking to somebody here. Come now! Let us reason. The almighty God is giving an invitation to mortal man. He said, come, two of us, let us reason. Let us reason together. Am I speaking to somebody here? When God created man, as soon as God formed man, the Bible says God rested. Not that God was tired. Because when God created man, man was now a God. And in the laws of the spirit, two gods can be working at the same time. So one God has to rest so that the other God can start working. That's why I say you can't serve two masters. God, you must choose one. How long will you stand between two opinions? So God Almighty stepped aside because the Bible says in Psalm 82 verse 5. He says, if he called them gods unto whom the world came, 
the scripture cannot be broken. He said, because you are God. You all are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Ye are gods. Ye are gods. Ye are gods. Some time ago, when I was, I gave my life to the, to the Lord about two years after that. I went through some level of crisis. My father wasn't happy because he wasn't a believer then. So they kicked me out of the house. And we are very stubborn. We live with this kind of, we are looking for shrines to destroy. We just, look, we just go around looking for shrines, looking for witch doctors, their houses. Ah, ah yeah. Today people spend more time on their phones than on the throne. We were looking for, so there was one time we went to a witch doctor's house. In front of the house, we saw sacrifices. We saw a bottle of Fanta, chilled. A bottle of Coke, chilled. Eggs, chilled. We saw some currency and they kept it for gods. And the Bible said, I am a God. That was when that scripture was resonated. He said, Ye are God. So I went there, I took the bottle of Fanta. But of course, I cleaned it very well. I was looking for how to open it. A brother came and said, Ah, no! This is for God. I said, What am I? Ye are gods. I opened it, I drank the Fanta. I cleaned the coke, I took the money there, put it in my pocket because they kept it for God and the God that was available came to take it. Ye are God! Don't try that at home. <laughs> You've got to know you are before you take such a risk. Ye are God! A God can be threatened. No, no medical report, no medical verdict is strong enough to imprison your desires. Can I repeat that? No medical verdict is strong enough to imprison your expectation, to imprison your desires, to imprison what you have prayed for, to imprison your healing, to keep you quarantined and make you go through a pandemic scattered head life. Today, it doesn't matter what the doctors have said. It doesn't matter the verdict over your life that's negative, but the supernatural hand of God we overturn Ezekiel 21 27 I will overturn 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 he said until he come whose right is it I will give it to him hey God will give it to you God will give it to you power will give it to you heaven will give it to you God will give it to you heaven will give it to you somebody said I receive I receive I receive I receive I receive Ah, yeah. there's something more than this and I'm moving to my next level you know sometimes when God is at work that's why he says my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are my ways your ways my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are my ways your ways so the thought of God bets his ways if you understand his thoughts you will see his ways now this is our culture is our constituency this conveys to us and communicates to us the thoughts of God which culminates into manifesting the ways of God so when you understand the thoughts of God you manifest the ways of God because we live in the world the Bible says and Satan goes about like a roaring lion looking for looking for what seeking for whom he may he may so you are you are not in Satan's mind you only made yourself available yes he was just passing by who whom he may devour. Yeah, the battles all around this because you have not developed your spirit. You are not in Satan's mind. He's not thinking of you. You made yourself available. Looking for whom he may. When the devil began the project in the morning, he had no thought of you. You crossed his path. You made yourself available. And when he gets you, he won't stop. The Bible says in Amos 5.19, he says like a man who ran from the lion. As he was running to his house, a bear met him. When he saw the bear, he ran into his house to lean on the wall. A serpent beat him. So outside there were battles. He came to the house again. Satan is not a gentleman. 
I told you that Satan is not a gentleman. To enjoy the supernatural, you must be dissatisfied. Number two, you must take responsibility. First, they said, this place we are is too small for us. Number two, let us. Every one of them took asked the fellow beam. Let us. We are <laughs> we are the generation of Christianity is as it were an irresponsible generation. Our response to ability is so minimal and we end up ir it is it is gross and crass irresponsibility to make God solely responsible for the outcome of your life. It is irresponsible to make God solely solely responsible for the outcome. There is a role to play. There's a role to play. Take responsibility. I told you this morning that revelation without corresponding action is what? Charismatic affliction. There are people, they get all, if you are looking for word, for talkatives, they are in the church. Pastor will talk and talk and talk and talk, no power. Lecturers. Then you see those con congregation continue, talk and talk and talk, no power. People come to sing, they talk and they introduce the song with the song, empty. They finish singing the song and sing another song to conclude that song, empty. You see, I was in a church somewhere and they said we should pray. I was listening. Somebody was going for a kidney transplant and they wanted us to pray for it to be successful. A kidney transplant. We should pray. When God has spare kidneys, we should pray for a transplant. That is what the church has degenerated to. Somebody is sitting on your promotion in the office and you say we should pray God should touch his heart. Is he sitting with his heart? I was somewhere I'm trying to remember the, the, the state in America and they were praying they, was, they had the property so the, the man who owed the property was giving them so much problem they had paid their bills and done all that and the man was giving them so much pray, problem and they said the man is into witchcraft he was angry that they were praying against witchcraft and all that so they were praying that the Lord should touch him touch him so I walked out and st stood by the car so the pastor ran and said, you are not here to pray. I said, I don't know how to pray that kind of prayer. I don't know how to pray that kind of prayer. Bible never said that you pray for a witch to repent. He said, suffer not a witch to leave. We kill them. Am I communicating right now? Let us responsibility. Let us. Let us. Let us. God gave you hands to lay on the sick. You said the hands to bless shawarma. Bless French fries. Bl bless barbecue chicken. Hands to raise the dead. Constant foodfulness. Destroy fruitfulness. Constant foodful. Food. Food. <laughs> foodfulness. Destroys what? Fruitfulness. To continually fill your tummy is to gradually empty your destiny. To continually fill your tummy is to progressively waste your future. Fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. If you are foodful, you will see the fake. They take on fire. They're on fire. They're on fire. They're on fire. Set standards for them. Any believer that can't quote scriptures in tandem with his age is an irresponsible Christian. 16, script 16 years old, give me 16 scriptures. 40 years old, give me 40 scriptures. <laughs> there are people today, I look at them and I'm, I'm wondering, are you, are you a waste to the kingdom? One soul, not saved. Prayer, not done. Time with God. First John 5, 21. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Your phone has become your idol. Your iPad has become your idol. Your laptop has become your idol. You spend time with your system. No connectivity to God. Do you preach this kind of messages in London? In UK? Or is it taboo?
just you are just confined you are confined to the excitement you are confined to the pleasures you are confined to the cultures there's something more than this god expects you to take responsibility god will support your steps but he will not initiate them god will back up your steps but he won't initiate them you will take steps heaven will back it up write that exam heaven will back you up am i speaking to somebody here get into that project heaven will back you up but god will not initiate them no he would only back you up when you take those steps and there is somebody here as you take these steps the heavens will be opened up to you god will open the heavens unto you the lines will fall in pleasant places you have a great heritage the line will fall in pleasant places oh taste and see that the lord is good you will test it you will see it you will test it you will see it you will test it you will see it in action is the undoing of the church in action in action is the greatest undoing how many of you know that indecision is a decision <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh you're not aware indecision is a decision refusing to take step is a step uh, refusing to <laughs> by refusing to decide you have decided uh, are, you, are you following what I'm saying yeah by refusing to do anything you have done something and what you have done is nothing by refusing to pray by refusing you see it is a force stopping you from praying you are not tired it's a force it's a force you are not tired it's a force stopping you from praying force yourself to pray it's a force stopping you from i remember when i was growing up i come from a blessed a privileged family and growing up my father had cars he had money i grew up house help we have several house helps um nannies you know had cars so it was so bad that we eat up to like six times a day i didn't know what was lunch or breakfast you just eat when you're hungry go to the kitchen and eat there was there was not i grew up later and found out there's something called breakfast in the morning lunch at noon i didn't i mean just eat it was so bad that we eat 1 a.m not eating in the dream now real in reality 1 a.m so we're eating any i mean you eat as you like so when the lord called me when i became a minister i had the problem with fasting yes i had the problem with fasting i had a man of god said he fasted 40 days i said ah, ah. People, these people can lie i said these guys can lie 40 days only only jesus that's that's exclusive for jesus so i wanted to fast and the man said he prayed for 38 hours i said this man this man so i decided to pray so i locked myself indoors i started praying seven in the morning and i prayed i prayed 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 i was sweating the sweat dried up i prayed 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 you understand i prayed when i checked the time it was 7 30. said this man lied <laughs> because i was sweating back at that, back at that. i prayed so i said okay i won't give up i continued this time around i prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed i was sweating i was marching around i was sweating i prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed i was expecting when i opened my eyes to be evening because i was praying that long when i opened my eyes it was five past eight i gave up so i remember the first time when they this um, mountain those people that go to the mountain well, god help you if you, are, if you are still doing that so brethren went to it, me they said we should oh i went with them whichever one we went to the mountain and they said we're going to pray for seven days i said Rabba, ta, 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 ta. I told them i said i will make my own nine days so they said to me no seven days okay i said no 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 i 
power and the grace of God. So, climbing that mountain alone. <laughs> when, when, don't forget, we started it from home. We didn't eat anything. <laughs> so, we got, we drove for like six hours. I don't know what we are looking for. We got to the foot of the mountain. We started climbing. We climbed the mountain. As we got to, to the mountain top, then we were praying. I was looking at everybody. I was tired. I was hungry. I was angry. Like, who sent me? What am I looking for? So they began to pray. They were holding their hands. They were praying in tongues, praying in tongues. So I just stylishly went to a corner. Like I was shaking my head. I, was, I wasn't praying. I just walked away. I was thinking. Only, only first day. My life is like this. What will happen six more days? So when it got to my turn to pray, I said, Jesus, Jesus. The Lord said I should tell us. <laughs> he has answered our prayer. We should go home. Now, true life story. True life story. The Lord said we all should go home. They said, eh, I said, um, this is what the Lord just told me. <laughs> they said, but we plan to stay seven. They said, no, God has changed his mind. Now, of course, they didn't believe me. I left there alone. I'm honest to you. I left there. I went downstairs. It was raining. And I was under a tree. I waited till the rain stopped. And you know, when the rain has stopped, the real rain has stopped, the tree rain is different. <laughs> it was on me. I said never me go to the mountain never it's not my calling i went to one restaurant i sat down i said asking myself jesus you see most of this so-called revelation christ has done everything it's laziness oh it's our say, grace christ has paid it up they can't pray they can't fast christ has done there's nothing for us to do i understand do you know what it means to do three days dry sir i was i'm being honest to you i'm i'm, I'm trying to relate with some of us who, who are at that level so when people come around me now, you don't eat, you don't sleep. I said, this is the opposite of what I was. You don't, you are always praying. I said, it's the opposite of what I was. Sir, there's responsibility. I know you went to Harvard, you went to Oxford, that's okay. Even the devil is a graduate. I said, I went to school. He told Jesus it is written. How did he know? He read it. <laughs> He's learned. You, 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 he said, It is. How did he know? He read it. Satan is well read. So when it comes to that, no, sir. To put him where he belongs, you must engage the force of the supernatural. Am I speaking to somebody here? You must say, Young Gicho was praying, and a force, a demon came, boom, entered into his house and carried his bed. Young Gicho went to the corner of the room and was shivering. The demon turned the room, turned the bed upside down and took off. And he knelt and was thanking God. Oh Lord, thank you for preservation. God said, preserve what? You should be ashamed that a demon came and turned your room upside down. What do I do? He said, call the devil back to fix it. And he commanded the force to come. Boom! It came back. He said, put that phone where you took it from. Put this here. Put this here. And they put it. And he said, now get out! That is the authority of a believer. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Number three, and I'm going to pray. They said to the prophet, let us go. So to operate in the supernatural, you must understand the prophetic anointing. You can never advance in life without the prophetic. Without the prophetic, your life is pathetic. You must understand that, that there is a spirit in man, but the inspiration of the Almighty give it him what? Understanding. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Psalm 29 and verse 4. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea! 
the cedars of Lebanon, the voice of the Lord. John said, I was in the spirit in the Lord's day and I had a voice behind me. So how do I hear the voice of God? I must be in the spirit. It takes being in the spirit to hear the voice of God. He says it is the spirit that quickened John 6, 63. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Am I communicating here? Am I communicating here? I was in Maryland for the first time and we had a massive crowd. So we couldn't use the hall. By that evening, we changed to another hall of about three, 4,000 people. There were people outside. So the police came and said they have to shut down the place. We moved to another hall. The third time, about five, 6,000 capacity. It was packed full. And they said the policemen were outside to shut down the hall. So... I was ministering of course you know the way it, it, it works in the west i was ministering and i gave myself to the lord the first case the second by the third case the third case that was mentioned was a policeman he was outside he was the one that led others it was the third case that was mentioned that the wife has a kidney problem the lord described and described without his uniform at the back i saw him doing like this he was waving his hand i said correct good for you they became traffic control the man said nobody stops them leave these guys alone nobody they began to control the traffic and control it takes power to silence institutions to silence institutions power take the voice of god it takes the voice of god god is willing to speak to you but are you ready to hear can i talk to somebody here god is willing to speak you prepare to hear every step you take he says there are many voices many voices but only one is reliable there are many voices but only one is reliable are you ready to hear sometimes if you don't place value in direction he said there were many prophets luke chapter 14 from verse 25 there were many prophets in the day of elijah but only one to so only one what he said now the bible says look at this luke chapter 5 verse 17 he says and as jesus was preaching on a certain day there were doctors of the law come out of every tribe of galilee and the power of the lord was present to heal them to heal what them but only one man was healed the anointing came for them but only one was healed why value now let's be very factual i know we are under grace but let me be honest are you aware that the manifestations we saw in the old testament was stronger than the new oh are you aware oh it was in the old testament somebody caught fire from heaven are you aware did you see that in the new testament did you see that in the early church? Oh, it was in the Old Testament. Old Testament. That a man said, son, stand still. A man spoke to the son. The Bible said, never did God hearken to the voice of a man before and after that time. A man said, son, stand still. That man commanded the son and deleted one day from the human history that confused Jehovah's Witness. That Saturday is Sunday and Sunday is Saturday. Because one man deleted, <laughs> deleted one day from, from, from the, the, the almanac of the world. Why? Because <laughs> a man walked in dimensions. Old Testament. In the Old Testament, a man was being ridiculed and he commanded she bears to appear. And two she bears came out of the woods and consumed in the Old Testament. Why? And this New Testament, we claim to have received grace and received favor and we have received redemption. Minimal manifestation. I mean, I'm telling the truth. I was a Muslim. Okay? And I gave my life to the Lord Jesus and became a born again Christian. And if there was something that stood out, me out, it was my quest for power. My quest, my quest, because in that religion they are well read. Well read. They study. Before you attend, you are done. It's compulsory. So the difference has to be power, has to be the voice of God. 
crave for it. Hunger for it. Crave. Sir, the reason you are still on the spot is because you've not le- you've not heard the latest instruction. He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Matthew 4:4 4, 4, that proceeded present continuous tense. Not proceeded proceed that lord what are you saying now because what god said might not be what god is saying what god said might not be what god is saying god gave an instruction god said to do this but what is god saying now so we have to get to that point in our life when we are crying lord speak to me destiny is too cumbersome to attempt attainment with the instrumentality of the flesh you need the workings of the spirit now the lord is that spirit where the spirit of the lord is there is speak to me lord open my ears to hear you joshua got to a point where he was stuck and the bible said the angel of the lord appeared in joshua chapter 5 from verse 14 the angel appeared and he says that the captain of the lost host have i come to assist you into victory lord speak to me he said simon simon satan has desired to have you peter was standing by jesus but he was not aware that satan had an intention peter was working with jesus but not aware that Satan had an intention. He says, Look, focus on me, focus on me. He said, He said, the angel of the Lord appeared and said, Speak to me. There are people under the sound of my voice. By reason of this supernatural act of God, God, we open your ears. I didn't hear you. God, we open your ears. I said, God, we open your ears. Sato Kappa, speak to me. Open my ears to hear the voice of God. The voice of the Lord breaking the cedars of Lebanon. Peter was standing by Jesus. Not aware that Satan had an intention. Oh Lord, turn my body to eyes. Open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. Turn my body to eyes. He says, Satan has desired to sift you. Open my eyes. I reject spiritual blindness. I refuse to walk in blindness. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. There's a prophetic mantle, a prophetic fire in this place right now. You will no more walk in spiritual blindness. There is prophetic fire, prophetic mantle. No more spiritual blindness. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Jesus name and why we are standing here this here this there is no infirmity or sickness in the body that's a good one none none but the worst form of bodily attack is blindness that is why even in leadership that is when Jesus is talking about leaders he gives he, he, he equates it with blindness he said can the blind lead the blind Meaning that a leader can be anything but not blind. Why do we have the Holy Spirit? Do you know what the Holy Spirit is? Do you know what the Holy Spirit is? When I walk, I mean, even my instrumentalist in church, in our studio, when I walk, before I get there, all of them are praying. They are praying. You know why? When I walk there, the first man asks them, what is the Lord saying? You must give me a message from God. One said, God said it is well. I said, that's in the Bible. Tell me what God is saying. He said, God said it is well. I said, what do you mean it is well? Is that not in the Bible? What is the Lord saying? Ah, the Lord says with us. I said, that's in the Bible. We want a definite word. So sometimes I'm coming, they are not there at all. They just walk away. So was, you must say what God is saying. No, have you heard God? Have you heard it? <laughs> How come people will gather in the church and a sister goes to bed and not wake up and nobody saw it? The whole church, nobody saw it. Someone lost the job. Nobody was aware. Nobody picked it in the realms of the spirit. To say, this is the intention of the enemy. Let's frustrate it. Because everybody's blind. 
Koti Adabashata. Kodabarada Sata. Are you are you ready? I reject spiritual blindness. God. Oh my kosi prati latalatash. When the Lord begins to direct your steps. This word, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to have a civilized problem. Because civilized problems are found in civilized nations. Very educated problem. A problem that has heaps of degrees. Civilized problem. So you are just in the world where you live from paycheck to paycheck. Everything seems okay. And life is wasting. Yeah, life is wasting. A young man had some money in his pocket. You may have seen this in our life service on Sunday. A young man had some money in his pocket and sat in a vehicle. And someone touched him. You, you watch that? And when he came out, all the currency is turned to paper. I was going, walking, and I said, I was walking through the crowd when the prophecy came. I said, you enter the vehicle. And the money. He said, look at it. He brought it out. So I said, why did you come? He said, change it back. Change it back. I said, change what back? Said, I, I came here. You change, change. <laughs> I blew the change. <laughs> change, change. Change it back. I said, no. That, that's, that's how the world has degenerated to. I said to Jesus, if you don't back me up with power, I'm not going to preach. No, I'm not going to preach. So if you traveled all the way from wherever you came from, or you came to this meeting, and came for a casual meeting, I'm sorry, you'll be disappointed. God is going to invest dimensions of grace upon your life. I don't like your amen at all. Lord expects us to live in the supernatural naturally. Look at Philip in Acts chapter 8. It's two that was talking in, in, in Azotus. The next day he disappeared to Samaria. He teleported to Samaria. Peter was walking past and people dropped the sick. His shadow fell on them. Jesus would pass by and demons would scream out. Have you come to destroy us before the time? What happened to those days? What is happening? That things will happen to you and you'll be taken by surprise and you're a man of the spirit? I wish I'm talking to somebody here. A brother in the city of Abuja. Abuja is um, the federal capital territory in my country, in Nigeria. The wife reported him and they had some issues it was on a Sunday so I was about traveling from a city called Benin so I called him up on the phone I said how are you he said I'm fine he said Papa can I call you back I'm on the queue I said no step out of the queue I'm going to talk to you he said I'm on the queue actually we are boarding I said step out of the queue he stepped out of the queue we're talking we're talking he said sir just two more people before me can I when I land I'll talk to you I said don't cut this call we're talking we're talking and he said they're about to shut the door i said let them shut the door listen to what i'm telling you he said ah papa please can, oh god can, can i call you oh sir sir can i call? i said don't drop the phone the plane left i wasn't hearing his voice again i was saying hello i can hear you i said are you hearing me papa i can hear you i can hear you i can hear you i said are you upset no, 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 not really. No, 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 not really. I can hear you, but I've, I've missed my flight. I said, You get another one. I said, All right, take care. Papa, are you going off the phone? I said, Yes, uh, now. I said, Yes, 20 minutes later, he was calling, but I was already airborne. I landed in Lagos and he called back and was crying, Papa the plane had crashed it was called Sosoliso crashed 
Baba. As I'll talk to you. He said, no, no, talk to me now. Talk to me now. I said, what? He said, I don't know what is about to happen again. Just keep talking. Just talk to me. Stay on the phone. I said, no, but God has. He said, no, I don't. I'm scared. I can't even move. The voice of the Lord. Sometimes God can be speaking and you are not hearing. You know what the Bible says in 2 Kings 6 17? He said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes and he saw. The Lord opened his eyes and he saw. Eyes that look are many, eyes that see are few. There are eyes that are looking. Are you listening? Can I tell you a true life story? About 19 years ago, there was a young man that was coming around my meeting. So I, I spotted the prophetic grace of God upon his life. 20 years ago, I spotted the prophetic grace of God upon his life. He was always in our meetings. He was in my meetings. He brought a girl. He was about to marry. I looked at the girl. I said, hmm. Mm. When he walked away, the girl said, I do not like Apostle Suleiman. And he was in love. So she severed him. That was the beginning of his crisis. 19 years of tumor. He started the church. And she made sure she messed it up. When his life was going down. Three years. The woman never talked to him. Never called him. Never said anything to him. The day he made up his mind. That he was coming to see me. Was the day she called him. He said where are you going? He said why are you asking me? You don't call me. You don't talk to me. He said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to see Apostle Suleiman. Must you go? Must you go? Must you go? Must you go? Yeah. Yeah. So he said, sir, from... He called the name of where I was coming from. She like got there. He said, she has not called me ten times. Do you have to go? Why do you have to go? As soon as he came... He didn't tell me all of this. As soon as he came and he was talking, I was looking at him. When he was done, I said, your old battle, your battles is your wife. He fell from the chair. The young man who witnessed all those back-to-back -back calling the car with him collapsed. He said, Jesus! I said, why are you shouting? Jesus! And he narrated the story. 20 years. And the lady said, and now I'm done. My assignment. Pastor! He said, I'm done. That's the world we live in. And it becomes more terrible in the West when your problem is civilized. You might, you, <laughs> Satan doesn't care where you live. How many of you know there's no VIP HIV? There's no VIP HIV. It's the same. No VIP cancer. And that is why you must, you must be rebellious tonight. And say, Lord, you will open my eyes. I reject spiritual blindness. Just imagine you walk in daily divine direction. I reject spiritual blindness. Open my eyes that I might see. Who is Uche? Is there something like that? Who is Uche? I just had that. I'm seeing someone, you are like a nurse or something. What's your name? Uche. Eh? Uche, and I'm a nurse. You're a nurse? Yes, sir. Come here. Lift your hands. The Lord say, your time has come. Your time has come. Your time has come. Stand up, lady. I saw a white man by your side. Who is Brian? Brian is my husband. I want to pray for you. He cleans. He cleans. He cleans. He cleans. Sir. What's he cleans? He cleans. H-I-S. What does it mean? What? Uh, I don't know. It came from the Norwegian side. Lady, listen to me. Your time has come. I saw a demonic orchestration. And I look at me, ma. I saw a, a deposit of the devil that God wants to take out of you. I saw something that swallows babies. I saw something, madam, I saw something huh, inside that 
kills babies, swallow babies, kill babies. Babies come. I have lost so many. Huh? Yes. I, hold on, let me explain. Something that babies go here. One, two, three, four. And I saw one out alive. Yes. But something happened. Yes. Give birth to one alive, but that one died. Yes, Can I pray sir. for you? Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. Why am I seeing your husband inside the bus? Yes, he drives bus. Woman, write to this date down. This is the counsel of the Lord. All that the enemy has stolen from you, the Lord shall begin to restore. Now, look at me. There are spies, monitors, spies planted around you. Do you know a place like Derby something? Derby. That's where I live. And I'm asking, how many of you are ready to pray? I want us to take a prayer. Lord, open my eyes that I may see. Open, I reject spiritual blindness. Open my eyes. Say, my father, my father. Shout it louder. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray, open my eyes that I might see. Open my eyes that I might see. Open my eyes that I might see. Open your mouth and fire prayers. Zakata. Yes, sir, 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 yes,